Mateo, thank you very much for this opportunity to meet you in your office and uh, to talk about um, various topics for our KPMG Review magazine. Just very briefly, KPMG Review magazine is a magazine uh, for Ukrainian business community, which talks about you know areas of interest for people, uh, for business people in Ukraine. So with that, um, uh, we, our tenth uh, issue of KPMG Review magazine is dedicated to Ukraine uh, 30 years of independence. And uh, my first question, or let's say area of questions, uh, is about um, Ukraine's past. Uh, I mean, looking back and looking what uh, the contribution that EBRD has done, um, uh, what do you see are the most uh, successful uh, and key uh, things of changes that happened in Ukraine over the last 30 years? Uh, first of all, thanks very much, Andrei, for inviting me, and thank you very much for coming, and welcome to our offices here in Kiev. Uh, if I look back, uh, I would say that uh, most probably the, the greatest success of Ukraine in the past years has been the association agreement with the EU for many reasons. For mm -hmm. Because that has strengthened the political relations with uh, the EU, has uh, deepened the common values between Ukraine and uh, the European community, and also has strengthened significantly the economic ties with, uh, bet between the two markets. Um, another uh, very significant achievement, in my view, has been the macroeconomic stability, uh, which has been reached over the years. And, uh, and, uh, and the third achievement, given the circumstances uh, post 2013-14, uh, has been the cleaning up of the banking system. And we have seen the result of that in the way Ukraine has gotten into the crisis, the pandemic crisis last year, uh, with a very strong banking system, uh, very liquid, and, uh, and very much able to sustain and help the real sector to sustain the impact mm -hmm. of the crisis. Okay, thank you, Matteo. Um, uh, talking about EU association agreement, uh, <coughs> There's been a lot of, uh, let's say, additional access, a uh, lot of uh, development of Ukrainian uh, companies in EU market. But do you still see that there is still a lot of, you know, opportunities, uh, room for Ukrainian businesses uh, to pursue the benefits of this association agreement and work, uh, you know, sell, trade uh, more actively with the EU? Do you still see a lot of, still a lot of potential in that area? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the CFTA associated to the association agreement mm -hmm. has always has been clearly a, a very important uh, source for uh, bolstering uh, and, and, uh, and increasing the trade volume uh, between the EU and Ukraine and, and in also has been a very good way of anchoring the improvement of business practices and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and production standards in, uh, in particular in the, in the industrial sector in the country. And indeed, I see quite a lot of uh, uh, residual potential, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in this sense. And I'm thinking about two uh, areas, for instance. One is the agribusiness value chain. Mm -hmm. We are used to think about Ukraine uh, in terms of primary farming. I think there is quite a lot that can be done uh, further down the value chain, mm -hmm, in, uh, mm -hmm. more value-added uh, production, so in, 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 the, in the processing of food. And, uh, and, and I also uh, think that uh, the pandemic has shown that uh, global value chains uh, uh, um, should be reconsidered. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the near-shoring or onshoring of activities of a number of uh, EU industrial groups uh, would open uh, quite a bit of an opportunity for Ukraine given uh, the ability of uh, the industrial sector here to um, uh, respond to challenges in terms of uh, technology and uh, know-how and we have seen that for instance in the, in the IT sector. Mm -hmm. So I think Ukraine has an opportunity now really to play a significant role in this near-shoring uh, mm -hmm. uh, process that 
in my view, will happen necessarily mm -hmm. as a result mm -hmm. of the of the pandemic and the disruption, the overall disruption of the supply chains around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking about these opportunities, um, uh, <coughs> do you see this as um, uh, more for uh, big businesses like big agricultural businesses or perhaps uh, SMEs can also take a role? Because SME, I'm particularly keen uh, to know, um, you know, what are uh, EBRD's objectives because EBRD has been very supportive of SME sector development with a lot of initiatives and uh, perhaps uh, seeing this as one of the key pillars of future development of Ukraine. Uh, you, you're absolutely right, and, and thanks very much for this question. Uh, let me say something about EBRD's uh, relationship with the SME sector in Ukraine, and and uh, and uh, and then I go to your specific question about uh, what is the opportunity for SMEs. So yes, indeed, we uh, the SME sector is is an area of focus for the BRD, both in terms of financing, because we have a portfolio of over 300 million euros in SMEs. And, uh, and in terms of advisory services and support services for SMEs, mm -hmm. uh, where we um, provide advisory and support to uh, anything between 120 and 150 clients each year. And we have a portfolio of 1,300 clients in, uh, in the SME sector. Mm -hmm. So indeed, the SME sector is in, uh, crucially important for us because it's crucially important for the development of uh, Ukraine in our view. And I am absolutely certain that uh, they can play a role in, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the process that I was referring to mm -hmm. uh, earlier on in terms of near shoring, but also in, uh, in the overall process of uh, um, developing the economic uh, system of the country in a sustainable way. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm referring to issues like uh, uh, Paris alignment and climate action and, 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 and green agenda, but also digitalization. Mm -hmm. Exactly because SMEs are more nimble than bigger groups in, in addressing these issues. Mm -hmm. When you uh, talk about digitalization for SMEs, uh, can you elaborate uh, a little bit what, what exactly? Uh, well, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, what we have seen during the pandemic, the way of conducting business had to be changed and, mm -hmm. and, and digitization is, mm -hmm. is absolutely crucial to that. Our own business with SMEs has changed. We used to provide uh, our advisory services, sending people in particular uh, uh, both uh, local and, uh, and uh, foreign consultants to those companies for weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. We have completely changed that mm -hmm. and we are providing our services uh, uh, on Zoom online, or, yeah. <laughs> or, or, or any other uh, online platform. And, and similarly, this is a new way of doing business, conducting business that the SMEs should, should exploit. And, um, mm -hmm. and the entire IT sector actually is, uh, is uh, which is flourishing and very vibrant in Ukraine, mm -hmm. is, uh, is an area that could be uh, mm -hmm. uh, presenting a significant potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. We touched on, um, uh, on this uh, ability of uh, to adapt quickly um, and uh, you know, um, KPMG, we uh, conduct annually a CEO Outlook, that's a uh, you know, survey of biggest uh, CEOs of biggest companies. And regularly, uh, every year, uh, they rate uh, the, one of the key qualities for the success of the company is uh, agility. Yeah, ability to adapt quickly to the you know, changing environment and uh, yeah, continue, continue growth. So in that perspective, very interesting. Yeah, SMEs, you believe, are very well positioned and Ukrainian businesses to adapt. Absolutely. Well, look, more in general, what I, I'm, I'm deeply convinced of, and I keep telling my colleagues, uh, clients, uh, and, uh, and, and partners outside Ukraine, is the, the, the real compelling uh, uh, competitive advantage of the country is its human capital. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and the SME entrepreneurial um, ecosystem is showing that at its best. And agility is indeed uh, a, a, a significant part of that uh, of that mm -hmm. thesis. Uh, maybe let's uh, 
next move, uh, I'm uh, doing another subject um, uh, of uh, investing in Ukraine. I mean, we have, you know, in KPMG also doing a lot of research. We recently do, did, um, you know, M&A um, uh, uh, research uh, analyzing the activity in the market. Frankly, it's not very high, as you know, but uh, also referring to your experience and uh, experience and role of EBRD. I mean, EBRD uh, is, um, uh, you know, uh, second only to IMF invest in Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken, and over the 30 years invested, you know, billions and billions of uh, dollars in Ukrainian uh, economy. Uh, how do you see Ukrainian investment, you know, market developing, other, how to attract other investors from uh, overseas in particular? Um, how do you see things developing in that area? Um, yes, in, in, indeed, uh, I think EBRD is, is a significant player, uh, clearly, in, uh, in, uh, in the Ukrainian market, but also Ukraine is a very important market for the BRD. So it's, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ukraine was the second market of, uh, of investment, the second country recipient of investment in 2019, and the third one in uh, 2020 after Egypt or Turkey, which are much bigger markets. So we mm -hmm. clearly uh, punching above our weight maybe uh, as a BRD mm -hmm. in Ukraine, but also Ukraine punches well, above yeah. its weight uh, within the BRD region of operation. So okay. that is a very strong partnership mm -hmm. which we uh, will continue to engage in. And, um, and indeed one of the, uh, the areas where we want to continue focusing is attraction of foreign direct investment in the country. And that happens on uh, on, on, on many fronts, of course, uh, in terms of indeed foreign direct investments, but also could happen through foreign portfolio investments. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when it comes to foreign direct investment, indeed, the track record uh, lately has not been uh, as right. positive as we wished. There, ha there have been a few instances where I think uh, ecosystem has not uh, presented itself in the best possible way and referring for instance to what has happened in 2020 in the renewable energy sector which was one of the biggest uh, sectors of uh, um, destination of foreign direct investments and the retroactive change of the tariff system and the way the negotiations have been conducted is probably not given a sense of, uh, of predictability in the long term. Um, but on the other hand, we had uh, very successful cases of, uh, for instance, concessions in, uh, in the infrastructure sector with the two ports of Olga and Herson. And, uh, and hopefully that will get traction and we will see more mm -hmm. concessions and PPPs and more attraction of private sector, including foreign capital in uh, the development of infrastructure in the country. Mm -hmm. And then there is the, the, the other big pillar, which is foreign portfolio investments, which again have been very much present, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, the development of a local capital and commodity market in Ukraine could be conducive to, to an increase of uh, that volume of investments. And that's why we recently signed a memorandum of understanding with the Prime Minister uh, with, uh, with the governor of the MBU, together with USAID and, uh, and uh, the American Chamber of Commerce um, for the development of, uh, of uh, the con and the consolidation of an integrated platform mm -hmm. of commodities and securities market in mm -hmm. the country. There is a lot of work to be done yet. We, we are just at square one of this, uh, of this uh, very long journey, which is I'm sure it's going to be very difficult and challenging, but it also presents a very promising opportunity for, for attraction mm -hmm. of capital and, uh, and also uh, an opportunity for both investors in the country, uh, retail investors, but also professional investors to get into a system that would offer um, opportunities of investment on one mm -hmm. side, but also opportunities of divestment. For instance, I'm thinking about the private equity sector, mm -hmm. which doesn't have uh, many exit opportunities. And, and if you offer that, 
uh, uh, that creates a positive momentum for the development of that, that sector as mm -hmm. well, which obviously is a mm -hmm. very important way mm -hmm. of developing uh, the real sector in, in the country. Mm. In this context, the attraction of, uh, of uh, state-owned enterprises in, in, uh, in the course of privatization uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in public markets mm -hmm. uh, through IPOs, listing, uh, is obviously uh, uh, very important and, and, and would be instrumental for that to happen. And for that to happen, you need to make sure that the corporate governance of state-owned enterprises and state-owned banks is preserved. Oh, Matteo, thank you for um, uh, commenting on this new initiative you were talking about next QA, right? Um, uh, can I um, uh, ask you, um, for this initiative um, uh, to be successful, as you mentioned, that's just, you know, square one. I mean, that's just initial memorandum that is signed. What are the key things that need to, uh, to happen for this to be successful? Is, this, is it, um, you know, regulatory changes? Is it, uh, you know, interest from foreign investment uh, investors? What do you believe are the key uh, success factors for this initiative to really be successful and really be a driver of, you know, uh, increasing FDIs uh, in Ukraine? I think, I think there are many factors that are actually common to this initiative and the general uh, uh, investment in climate in mm -hmm. the country. And the first one is obviously rule of law. Mm -hmm. And uh, investors, whether well, they are foreign direct investors, portfolio investors, local investors, they want predictability and, and credibility of the ecosystem. So rule of law, rule of law, rule of law. And uh, um, for the market to gather momentum, and I saw that in other countries where I've lived and worked in the past, you need the infrastructure on one side, and hopefully the private sector will play a, a, a significant role in mm -hmm. the development of infrastructure because that is what is needed. We don't want the infrastructure to be in the hands of the state sector. Mm -hmm. and, but also you need assets to be uh, in the put on the market. That's why I was referring to the opportunity that we have in terms of privatizations and IPO and listing. And, um, mm -hmm. But for those assets to be palatable for investors, you need to ensure that the governance of those assets is up to the standard that mm -hmm. international investors would expect. Uh, because what sometimes gets lost in the debate is that corporate governance is not something that stays in a vacuum. Is Corporate governance is probably the most important ingredient for value appreciation and value uh, increase of, uh, of uh, companies or banks or uh, so uh, it, it, it's not a nice thing to have is is something which is crucial if you want to increase the value of your assets yeah, yeah. it's not just a tick box I mean you really have to and, have and, it and you need to yeah. believe in the yeah. spirit of that exactly not not yeah. only yeah. Yeah, talking about uh, corporate governments, you mentioned a couple of times uh, state-owned uh, banks. Um, uh, what do you see the right uh, strategy for Ukraine in terms of privatizing these banks? Because banking sector is uh, a significant, you know, state-owned component, and yeah, I think it's the overall consensus that it should be reduced. But the question is, what should be the strategy? I mean, what should be the timeline? What should be the uh, specific step? Do you have any thoughts? On that, how to but I, that? I think uh, the government has set for itself uh, a, a, an ambitious but absolutely doable target to reduce uh, significantly the presence of the state in the banking sector uh, by 2025. And uh, we are absolutely supportive of that strategy uh, because we uh, agree that. Uh, a system where more than 50% of the banking assets are in the in, uh, in state uh, in state ownership uh, is, is not conducive to to a proper development of the economy of the country, and um, and we uh, play a role in that. We we already play a role by providing technical assistance, for instance, to Oshad uh, to commercialize itself, 
uh, we play a role by providing technical assistance to uh, the deposit guarantee fund and um, and this we we of course we work with the state on banks because that is a very efficient way for us to channel funds to the SME sector uh, through their very granular network of uh, of, uh, of branches. All right. Well, well, thank you very much for your comments. And the last, uh, you know, question uh, that I have um, is about the future. Of course, the future depends on the, you know, resolution of current issues. Yeah, that we talked about and the current situation. But uh, still, if you look, you know, further into the future over the next five years, where do you see Ukraine uh, going? Um, uh, what do you see there? Look, I'm extremely optimistic. Uh, about the future of Ukraine. If the geopolitical conditions remain stable, I think uh, exactly for the reasons that we were mentioning, human capital and, uh, and the, uh, the reform path that has been already um, uh, walked uh, through uh, in the past seven, eight years, um, I think Ukraine is clearly going in the right direction. Now, the, 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 the reforms are never a, a linear trajectory. There are always uh, ups and downs, uh, some steps uh, backwards, or step, st some steps uh, uh, sideline. Uh, but if you look where Ukraine was in 2014 and where look, uh, Ukraine is now, uh, an amazing job has been done, amazing progress has been achieved, and, and that creates a, a, a very, very fertile ground for, for further development. And I think in, even in these days, uh, uh, reforms like the land reform, uh, uh, the, the concession law, and uh, the efforts made to attract uh, private uh, capital in the development infra of infrastructure. Indeed, we discussed mm -hmm. the, the reform of the banking sector, the privatization efforts uh, that have been put in place pretty successfully with small privatizations last year. And now we are moving to, towards uh, bigger privatizations, uh, which I'm pretty sure they will attract interest. Uh, all those are steps uh, really in the right direction. Then we have all the negative noise uh, on, on a number of fronts and we should not, we should be honest with ourselves about it. Uh, but uh, but if the time horizon is five years down the line, I think, I think we, we, we are set for success. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Matteo. Um, thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts, uh, a lot of insights, uh, yeah. Thank really you very much, Andre. I really appreciated the chat.